Welcome back to part two of our look at Pontefract Castle. In this video, we will be looking at the myths and legends of secret tunnels under the castle, and also paying a visit to the dark dungeons that lurk inside the castle bedrock. So here we are at Pontefract Castle, but very shortly we're going to be doing a tour around the castle by one of the guys that work here called Ian, and he's going to be taking us into my favourite place, down into the dungeons below the castle. And it's down that little hatch there just behind me. So we're going to head down the steep staircase, which would have been underneath the courtyard here. Okay, so we call this the dungeon. Um, we used to call it the magazine, um, and you could also call it a wine cellar. Okay. So, Ilbert de Lacy, he is the man who built the castle originally. He's French, um, he's come over to this country, and the French need somewhere to store their wine, and so that's what this is. As they do. Um, the reason it got called a magazine is the, the implication was it was used to store powder during the Civil War. Um, but it wasn't ever used for that, so it's a bit of a misnomer. Uh, and the reason we call it the dungeon is because genuinely it was used to hold prisoners during the Civil War, and that's one of the things I'll show you. Yeah. Excellent. Um, we've just come down again, what I call modern steps, um, but they're Victorian again. They were put in by George Dunhill, he used the space to store licorice and he wanted a straight staircase down to bring his licorice roots in. Um, probably by the time that he found this, this staircase had already gone, but this is the original staircase um, and it was a spiral staircase that came down from the Great Hall, uh, which would have been a timber building built by Ilbert, down to his cellar to, to get the wine up. Um, we know these stairs are original um, and we know these stairs were here during the Civil War because there's the first of our graffiti on them. Um, and what we've got is we've got um, Roger Preston, my glasses are steaming up terribly, uh, 1640 something, there's a, there's a number missing there. Um, we know the names of the prisoners that were held here, and he's one of them. Excellent. Um, so there's a, there's a Reg there, and there's, um, there's this one here. Um, so we know from some of the Ignore the date, that's a different piece of graffiti. Uh, we know stylistically that what they did was they didn't have any weapons here, they didn't have anything really to carve their names in, so they're using their belt buckles to create a series of dots which they joined up. And the other thing they did is they, they drew a box around their inscription um, and the same there to mark out their turf so no one else is going to write on it. We've just come down the modern staircase here. I say modern, it's still quite old. And we're heading down now into what is known as the dungeons and also the magazine. I'll explain more about that in a second. But this behind me here is the original spiral staircase from above us here down into the dungeons. Um, so there you've got John Grant, 1648, and again you see it's in a nice box. Um, and then we've got. You see there you've got James um, Robston and John Grant again. 1648 again, is that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, you normally see Victorian graffiti, but not as old as that. Uh, and John Grant, we know, he was the gunner um, for the troops that were garrisoned here. Again, 1648 graffiti there. You just don't see it that old. So this is as far as the dungeons would have gone originally. And uh, so he said it was a wine cellar. And uh, that's the staircase we've just come down. And then now we're gonna head further down into what he says is a more modern part of the dungeons compared to this section that we're in now. It's how you would imagine a dungeon to look, isn't it? So lots of uh, these rooms off the main corridor here. What would these have been then? This is just storage space. 
So storage space, no more than that. What date would you say on this part then? Uh, this is probably 12th, 13th century. 12th or 13th century. So still old, just not as old as the front bit. So lots of these uh, little uh, corridors linking. So when you think of a dungeon in a castle, this is what I would think of. You can see a bit of a fault line there, maybe, in the bedrock. So yeah, these are definitely carved out in the bedrock, aren't they? Yeah, and what they've done is they've um, made use of the natural faulting nature of the rock. And so you see it's not straight. Um, we believe that's because they've encountered a crack and they've just followed it and manipulated it because it just makes carving out the stone easier. Brilliant. So you can just see again some uh, fault lines in the bedrock there or natural cavities there. So yeah, he said it was formed slightly on an angle because of the bedrock. We're basically following the formation of the stone to carve out. And the floor is just completely uneven. Definitely carved out, but it looks amazing. So you've got some posts down here on the floor. So he thinks that this part would have been sectioned off with a large gate. You can see the, uh, probably where the post was, just there in the wall. So Ian was just telling me that if he was to radio another staff member from down here now, and they were just stood at the top of the stairs, they wouldn't receive it because of the way that the rock is formed here. But just through there, in the Elizabethan chapel, which is behind this rock here, if she was to radio through from there, the signal would be received. And he thinks it's because of these fault lines in the rock here. The signal is traveling through these small fault lines here, which is really fascinating. So here we've got uh, Thomas Heslington, Robert Pryor, and Robert Greathead. And you can just about make out 16, and then it gets a bit big. So are these, have just been visitors or? You know, these are prisoners. Oh, actual prisoners. These are prisoners. So uh, a lot of the prisoners that were held down here in the dungeon, so you had the parliamentarians and the royalists all fighting back in the day. And they've left a lot of their graffiti on this wall. Again, dates of 1648 all over here. And lots of interesting names that they can link back to prisoners being held here. So he was also just saying earlier on that this was also used as a licorice store back in the Victorian period. And a lot of these names here, because of the dates, 1877 on that one, would have been a lot of the workers down here for Dunhill's licorice which is why if you've heard of a Pontefract cake, you'll know that it's made out of licorice. They were made here, obviously, and that's why they also have a picture of the castle on the cake, because a lot of it was stored down here in the Victorian period. So we're used to seeing Victorian shafts in railway tunnels, but not medieval shafts in a castle. So again, we're in the dungeons, and right above me is a shaft up to the surface, as you can see. Now, he believes that this would have been mainly for maybe bringing goods down into the dungeon from above, because the spiral staircase would have been a bit of a nightmare back in the day. So they would have used this to lower the goods down into the dungeons. And maybe even for the improvements that they made down here to take the rubble away, who knows? Yeah, it's not dissimilar to the sort of shaft you'd get in a railway tunnel, is it? No. So this little small uh, crevice, I would call it, in the floor, it's like a little hole, but we think it could have been a fault, again, in the rock work that they've just used uh, as a drain, basically, to drain all the water coming down the stairs. And lots of these little alcoves in the wall here, probably for lighting or candles back then, just to light the dungeons up. But one more look back at the dungeons. But if you were to say, a castle dungeon, this is what I would think it would look like. It's very warm down here, actually, yeah, <laughs> especially it's, compared it's to what's the same temperature down here, it's quite impressive. 
So as you can see here are the remains of King's Tower that would have stretched right above our heads here. So this wall right behind me here, as you can see, it has a bricked up tunnel entrance there. Now a lot of the local rumours around here are that this is a secret tunnel, but it isn't. I'm sorry to shatter your dreams, but this was the King's Tower behind that wall there. And all that is basically is because a few cracks opened up under the tower, a few fissures, and the tower would have collapsed. So what they did, they built this vaulted arch underneath to strengthen it, because as you know, an arch is stronger than a straight wall. So they built it just underneath the tower, just to strengthen the tower and stop it from collapsing. So that is all it is. And he said, just behind this wall here is what they believe is just a big pile of rubble. So if you just look at the keystone at the top of the archway there, you can see it's got a date of 2019. Now, obviously that's not the date that this was built. <laughs> That's the date that this archway was restored. Now this is the top part of what would have been the King's Tower. So we were just stood down there looking at the archway underneath. So the tower would have been here, rising right above our heads. So whilst we're on the subject of the dungeons and the tunnels, we've seen all that this castle has to offer in terms of accessible underground chambers and tunnels. Now, there are lots and lots of rumours going round of tunnels to Featherstone and even beyond that, all around this area from the castle. Now, it's highly unlikely that they would need tunnels under here for any reason. They were very expensive to build and very expensive to maintain. So they would have needed a very good reason to have tunnels. Now, Ian has told me as a historian of the castle, he's researched these tunnels for many years, looking for anything or any evidence that points towards any tunnel leading beyond the boundaries of this castle. And he can't find anything, not a shred of evidence. Thank you very much for watching. You can check out more of my videos here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.